So we're going to begin Unit 1, which is about patterns. Um, and we're looking specifically here about finding a rule to describe a pattern. But patterns are really just things that we see repeated over and over again. And you can kind of think about that like a quilt. Sometimes it's um, a design, something that you can make physically. Or sometimes it's just numbers that we would look at as well. But if you want to take a look at this particular pattern, we can think about these being individual matchsticks. And we can lay them out, and you see this unit is kind of repeated. The first one you see one sort of chair shape, and in the second one we see that doubled, so we see it again. And in the third one you'll see it, there's three chair shapes there. So in the fourth one, you can imagine it would look very similar, just like the third, but we'd add a fourth one onto it. So we see the same thing as getting repeated over and over again. So if we want to find a rule, and what I mean by rule is some sort of mathematical um, expression using maybe a little bit of algebra that can help us to predict how many matchsticks we need to build each pattern. So for instance, if you needed to build the seventh one, you could make a prediction to know exactly how many matchsticks you would need. So the first step for us is going to be setting up a table. I want to remind you that we're going to call pattern number as an in, a letter in to represent that. And we want to write that in the first column. So we can say pattern and then in for the pattern number. And the next column we would put the matchsticks. And we're going to call that a big S for sticks. So in this table, we actually need to fill it in. And we see here that we've got four patterns drawn for us. So we're going to say the first pattern, second pattern, third pattern, fourth pattern. And I need to figure out how many matchsticks are used for each of these. So I often count them up. And I usually draw a little line through them to make sure I've counted everything and not missed one or double counted. So one, two, three, four, five. Five in the first pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine in the second pattern. And then the third pattern, if you kind of start to pay attention here, you might notice um, the second pattern is two of those chairs, and it's already repeated there. So I might just count on from nine to figure out what's been added on. So for the new part of the third pattern, it's just these ones. One, two, three, four. So nine, ten, eleven, um, sorry, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we get up to thirteen, counting up from the nine of the previous one. And just to point that out, that's the new bit that was added on for the second pattern. We see the first one and then the second part added on. Here we see all of the second pattern and the new part added on. And here we can see the first three of the first of the third pattern and then those added on at the end. So for the fourth pattern, again, I might just count up the ones that have been added on. So we know that there's 13 in the first three and then 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 total matchsticks are needed. So if you pay attention to that, this idea that we're adding 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 new sticks each time, you can see that that's the pattern that's getting repeated. It's the thing that's being done over and over again. And looking at our table, what else do you notice? I'm going from the number 5 to 9. How would I get there? I'm adding 4 matchsticks on. And again, Going from 9 to 13, I'm adding 4 matchsticks on. And from 13 to 17, I'm adding 4 matchsticks on. What do you think would be, sorry, for the fifth pattern, what do you think you would do? If we're adding 4 on each time, for the fifth pattern, we could go from 17, add the 4 new ones on, and we would get to 21. So this is helping us visualize what's happening. We can see the four new added on each time, and we can see in the table the number that gets increased by it every single time. And this for us is going to be the multiplier, how much it goes up or down each time. So we can see here it's going up by four every time. Each pattern has four new matchsticks on it. So the next thing for us to do is actually figure out the plus or minus term. So what we're looking at here is basically for the first pattern, for the very, very first pattern, how many matchsticks do I need to build it? I need five matchsticks to build it. And I know that each pattern is going to use four more each time. So if I'm already using four for the first one, how do I get to five? If I've got four matchsticks I'm going to use that I know are going to be repeated in there, what do I need to get to five? And that's the plus one. So that's what I call the multiplier term. 
And if you look at the diagram of the first one, you'll notice that there's the four, that shape that gets actually drawn on every single time. And what's the one piece that's not included in that shape? How many matchsticks is that? That's right, it's just one matchstick that's not included. So that's the plus one. And you see, that's what we need to get it started off on the right. We need plus one and the four, and that will get us to the five matchsticks for the very first pattern. And after that, all we have to do is add four every single time. So my rule is going to start off with S being equal to, I'm going to use a different color, the number of matchsticks, S, is going to be equal to four times the pattern number, and we're going to add one at the start. So that plus one comes from this plus one that you need to use to get from the four that you know you're going to have, and what was originally in that very first diagram that you need that's not repeated every single time. So that's the plus one to get us to five. So the four times is the part we see repeated every single time, and the plus one is the stick that we see only in the first pattern. And why I'm going to say four times instead of four plus when we see that it's plus in the table is that how many times is that repeated in each pattern? We see it's times one in the first pattern, and actually in the second pattern you can see it there twice, so two times four in the second pattern and you'll notice it's in there three times, so three times four in the third pattern, and it's in there four times in the fourth pattern, so four times in the fourth pattern. And again, just sitting up front is the one extra little matchstick that we needed from the right from the get-go. So that's the plus one, and the times four comes from how many sticks we're repeating by every single time. So that's how we use our rule, or how we write our rule. Um, so again, the plus or minus term, you can look here at the very first term and figure out if I need 5 and I know I'm going to have 4 every single time, what do I need to add by or subtract by to get to that first number? So what do we need to plus or minus to get to the correct number of matchsticks for the first pattern? And that's the plus or minus term. And the multiplier is what we're increasing by every single time, and then we can fill in the s and the n for our rule. And just so you're aware of this, we sometimes write s is equal to 4n plus 1. And that comes from a tricky algebra thing that we'll learn about a little bit later, but just so you don't freak out if you see it, sometimes there's an invisible time sign between a f letter and a number. So you'll see it written out as 4 times n with the time sign, but you also might see it as 4n without the time sign. And either way is correct to write it. So again, setting up your table, be careful to put the n first and then the s. Figure out how many sticks you need for each pattern and how much that increases by every single time. That becomes your multiplier, your number you're going to times n by. And then look from that very first 4, how would you get to the first number that you need, the plus 1 here. And again, you can see that that's the 1 that's individually repeated every single time versus the 4 that's multiplied more and more every single time. And once you've got your rule, we can start using it, but give some practice just finding the rule in the first place. There's a worksheet for you, and then we'll go on um, to using the rule. If you do need another example that you'd like to look at, you might flick ahead to the next video, um, Finding and Using the Rule, where I recap both things at once, but you could watch just the, f just the first part of it.